Okay, in this uh, video we're gonna go ahead and try and rescue a Kerbal from Kerbin orbit here. So I'm gonna take the mission real quick. Alright, if we go to the um, tracking station, we should see now that Etri Kerman is now in orbit. Be a good idea to take a look at what we got here. So he's in a stable orbit. Uh, varying between 112 kilometers and 105 kilometers from Kerbin surface, depending on which side of the apoapsis periapsis he is. So, <clears throat> the uh, intercept is going to be not too complicated, but um, not cookie cutter. So, let's try getting a rocket into space. Okay, let's get the basics. Looks good to me. Let's launch it. Okay, so... gonna do okay with me just a moment all right so hopefully we can see the um, or you can rather hear me during the launch I'll try uh, there's not, not much that I'm gonna be saying is gonna be super important during the launch it's gonna be your standard launch uh, into a standard uh, circularized orbit now <clears throat> We can do what we can in order to tr try and time our launch so that we intercept Edry Kerman. Uh, it's kind of difficult to do manually. Um, MechJeb's capable of doing it, but uh, in reality, um, I don't have that module locked to unlock yet anyway. So um, the idea here is to get him close enough to the point of launch so that I can figure out whether or not, once I start to stabilize my orbit, whether or not to, I need to stay low or go high as far as terms of, of altitude. So if I'm in front, if like I get into a stable orbit and I'm in front of him still, I want to burn out to a higher orbit so that that way I'm going slower and he can catch up. And if he is slightly out in front of me, what I'll want to do is burn only up to 70 kilometers right above the atmosphere and skim along the atmosphere, which would be making me have a, a tighter orbit, which would mean that I would be, I, I, I'd technically be passing him at some point, and I, and I, and honestly, I think that the actual orbital velocity uh, is, let's see here, kind of curious, so orbital velocity 2230 meters per second, or 2230 meters per second, at that altitude, at a higher altitude, this guy's 
going slower. Okay, so uh, in, in actuality, that uh, I had that backwards. So his orbital velocity is slower. Uh, the higher he, he, he is at one, no, I actually had it right. I always just thought that you were going faster at a higher orbit because you have to burn longer to do it. But um, uh, it works like you would think it would. Lower, tighter orbits move faster around the planet than higher uh, orbits would. Uh, and the orbital velocity uh, shows that as well. So um, I'm here. Here's our rescue. Um, I would assume that another rival space program sent him in the orbit without the proper supplies, and now he's requesting assistance from the Kerbal Space Center. So we should probably oblige and rescue him, and maybe possibly he'll come to work for us instead of whatever uh, crazy Soviet program he was working for. So. <clears throat> Uh, let's go ahead and start the launch. We'll go ahead and, and launch to about 70 kilometers and then reassess the situation and figure out whether or not I need to stay there or uh, get a higher altitude. All right, so here we go. Three, two, one, and... <laughs> That's a good thing that works. I totally did not check my thrust to weight ratio before I started here. So this is a single-man mission. It's a two-man pod, so uh, we don't have to do anything super crazy. Uh, if you don't uh, like the idea of using a two-man pod to rescue your guys, and you're playing stock, and you want to do it with multiple single-man pods, you can do that. You just have to design an appropriate rocket. The science of uh, intercept and docking is the exact same. Uh, it just might be difficult, if, depending on how you design your rocket. So, uh, we are climbing through 2,500 meters, and uh, everything looks stable. Let's take a look at the cockpit here. Let's take a look at my missile viewer. Oh, that's neat. Okay, and what else do we have here? The C1, ship discurment. There's the date, and there's the log, the captain's log. Okay, uh, climbing through 6,500 meters. stutter, but that means that it's having to do a lot of physics calculations, so that might be something I, I think that means that I probably ought to turn my, uh, uh, my physics calculations down, because in fact I think the game's going a lot slower as a result. start our uh, gravity turn. Turn toward 90 degrees here. Alright, turn toward 90 degrees. We're going to bring it to about a 45 degree incline while we pass through the second layer here of the atmosphere. Once I clear that second layer at about 30,000 feet, we'll I'm sorry, 30,000 meters or so. We're going to go ahead and start to flatten our trajectory. Uh, and, yeah. The idea here is that I'm going to try and, uh, regardless of how much fuel I have left in this thing, I'm going to try and blow it away before I get a full circular uh, orbit. That way, um, I don't leave any debris in the atmosphere, or uh, in orbit, rather. Apolapsis is climbing up there, 40,000. So I'm going to bring the throttle back a little bit. And I'm 
going to go ahead and start to flatten out my trajectory. Let's take a look at the map and see where uh, Kerbal is. All right, looks like we're going to need to just set it right at 70 because he's getting out in front of us. Alright, so now uh, my apple apps is at 70 kilometers. I'm going to go ahead and do a standard circularization. Instead of doing the maneuver nodes manually, I'm just going to have MechJeb do it for me. Uh, but essentially, it's just that. Okay? So I'm going to use MechJeb and tell it to navigate my heading toward the node so I don't have to do that manually. I'm going to blow away this launch escape valve. Okay, so the estimated. Br Quiet. The estimated burn is going to be about 31 seconds, the node is in about 50 seconds. Uh, we want to stagger that burn on either side of the node, so that means that uh, it's going to be 15 seconds before and 15 seconds after the node. That way it's a perfectly timed um, burn before and after the node, that way it's all even. So I'm going to want to start the, the burn at T minus 15 seconds, or 15.5 seconds you want to be technical. And I'm going to try something. I'm going to turn off the engine. Right, the waddle all the way up. And then turn right, it back on at 15 drop. seconds. Interesting. Okay. I don't think that really did anything, but I was curious to do it. Right now, uh, since I'm doing this manually, it'll be a little rough, so I'm going to make sure that I'm paying attention to my apoapsis, because sometimes it's not precise, and you want to make sure that you don't start getting your apoapsis doesn't just start climbing out of nowhere. That means you need to redo your node. Okay, I'm going to slow down my acceleration. Alright, that's about, that's about good. Let's... Oh, shit. Okay, so... I'm going to dip back into the atmosphere here in a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it to circularize again right now. Create and execute. Turn my RCS thrusters on. And it's just going to burn in such a way that it circularizes at 70, 70 kilometers. Just enough. In fact, what it's at right now is pretty good. Let's see what happens. Jesus, burn already. Oh, shit. Alright. That totally didn't help. Oh god, stop. Okay, well, hopefully that won't be an issue. It's more than likely we'll be able to do our intercept node immediately. Let's see if I can turn down my max physics per frame real quick. Let's see if that changes the uh, amount of slowdown I'm getting. I must have a resource intensive part on my ship right now. Not really sure how any of that works just yet, honestly. Okay, I'm getting a message here. Let's see. 
Turn down game audio a bit. <sighs> Fine. Okay, hang on. Oh, you know what I could do instead? Maybe... Tell me if this works. No, that's not what I wanted. So let's try. Tell me if that's any better when we get back in here. I don't know what that just did. Hang on. Hopefully I'm still loud. I had to turn it up turn up my headphones, but see how that works. Okay, so we let's review. So we've launched. We've got no sta uh, almost stable orbit at about 70 kilometers. I'll dip into the atmosphere, but it's it's the the effect it's going to have on my orbit is minimal. Um, let's uh, tell this to go prograd while we figure everything out. Prograde, rather. Sorry, I mispronounce it because I read that so often that uh, it mis drops the e. Okay, so that doesn't <laughs> didn't seem to help that at all. So I don't know why the frame rate is so slow it's like it's I have a feeling it might be these RCS thrusters I added they might be uh, resource intensive I think it's still in beta anyway let's take a look here okay so let's retarget our Kerbal all right so keep in mind uh, he's got a higher orbit so I'm uh, by and I'm I'm, I'm bull behind him as far as catching up to him so that means that I'm in a lower orbit I'll catch up to him quicker uh, so let's just make a maneuver note that will send us out to since he doesn't have a circular orbit uh, one end it's like 112 over here I think it's like 105 um, it's the the maneuver note is going to change as okay so we're going to set it here right and, and it shows that my separation, just just picking a random spot, I know, I've done that so often, my separation by burning out to whatever altitude that is, I'm assuming it's 109, separation here would be 1.1 kilometers. Now, if, let's say that those two nuggets weren't lined up, and I moved this out here, it actually, ooh, I might even get a better one here. Okay, so because this orbit is kind of changing that means that I'm gonna have to burn out a little bit probably maybe burn back nope neither of those changed one of the other options you can do is play with the um, the shape of the orbit we can burn this way or that way and that might change it so let's see doesn't look like that changed much that's bringing them a little closer let's try burn this way all right, so now let's try. You really just gotta play with it and get them, um, get them. Just, just, just play with it. That's really all you, that I can say about that. One of the other things we did not do is match planes before we did this. That'll have an effect as well. So I highly, re you can actually see my orbit is a little further out because you can see the dotted line. So if I retrograde burn a little bit. Line those lines up a little bit, okay, and then we can move this a little bit more. I'm running out of time. I gotta do this quickly. Gotta start that burn like soon. 2.9 kilometers. Let's see. Let's burn a little bit more. We'll separate those. Okay. 1.0 kilometers. Oh shit. This is probably not helping anybody right now. It's not very clear on what I'm doing. Okay, what is that? 0.8 kilometers. That's a good starting point. So what that means is 
51 seconds I need to start my burn, and it's only 30, 32 meters per second, so I can probably start that right on the nose. That'll have a negligible effect. So I'm going to put that on the node. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, since it's not very clear what, what I was trying to explain with this because he's got an irregular orbit, I think it would be easier for me to, 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 to show you, explain concept. Um, with something that has a more regular circularized orbit, something that's equal all the way around. Um, so we can rescue this Kerbal and then return him, which would complete the mission. Or um, we can go out and try and rendezvous. Probably can't dock with, but we can at least try and rendezvous with one of these other objects out here if I have enough fuel. And that would probably uh, be a good example because I think his, this orbit is circular. Okay. Burning now, and cut. It's probably close enough. Let's kill that. Separation. I actually burned a little extra, and my separation's even a little, a little closer. So in 11 minutes, he's gonna come. He's he's on a higher orbit, right? So he's he's gonna be you know doing his thing. We're actually on a lower orbit, so we're as we're actually going, gaining altitude, we're going to be slowing down in, rel in relation to him, but we'll still be speeding up in such a way so that I'll be slowing down so that we're even right here, and that's when I'm going to do my... It doesn't mean we're going to be equal speed here, that just means this is going to be our closest point. So at this point right here, we're going to burn in a... Um, negative relative velocity vector so uh, as far as stock is concerned you've got I've got the nav ball on orbit right now I can switch it to surface which does me no good out here um, but then we also have the target mode so what that means is I'm already actually kind of pointed in negative relative velocity so if we go to we can tell the autopilot to do it. You got positive relative velocity, negative relative velocity here. So let's tell it go negative velocity, negative relative velocity, and the node, the flight director, will go right on top of the node. And right now, it's telling that, telling us that our relative speed between the two objects is 239 meters per second, which is about how fast the airplanes fly at, you know, f uh, at curb in curb and in atmosphere. Okay. So it's pretty fast, but you can see that our speed is dropping, and if we time warp, as we get closer, it continues to drop. Because I'm gaining altitude, slowing down, going, going to be getting close to a matching speed with him here, so that at our closest approach point, we'll be going a lot slower. I have It's coming out of warp, so it's going to reset on the negative relative velocity vector. And so what that means is, as this thing's passing me, I need to burn in the direction I'm facing in order to essentially match speeds, which makes sense. As you can see how he's burning in this direction, I would also need to burn in that direction to match speeds as well. So we're going to do that now. And we're going to bring it down just a little bit more. You don't have to be precise here, because the next step, but we, we will be precise for this for the sake of the video, especially if we were a lot closer, this would matter. Okay, negative, relative, but we have no change in relative velocity. Just stop right now. Oh god, what did I do? Okay. I also said that I was going to get rid of this before. Totally forgot. Okay, um... Well, it's not going to do me any good now, so I'm going to get rid of it, since it's almost out of fuel. It's just, just going to be debris out here a lot to be cautious of. Okay, so, where did my target go? Alright, so now we're going to find my target again. There it is. Okay, so, just in the time that we've been messing around, now granted I'm sure blowing that section away probably changed my, my speed, but... We're so far away from each other that over time, I've explained that our ch yep, there you go, I haven't touched anything and I'm actually, the direction that I blew that thing off made me speed up a little bit. But just sitting here, so far apart from each other, ve velocity changed from 0.2 back down to 0.1 again. If we'd sit here long enough, it'll probably go to 0.0, and then it'll go back up to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0
0.3, yada, yada, yada. So now what we want to do to go actually intercept this guy uh, is common sense stuff. We're going to burn right at the target. This is the indicator for negative and pos negative relative velocity. The, the yellow one on the other side is positive relative velocity, so that means that you would be burning away from them. The, the exact vector that you're going away from them is over here, positive relative velocity. And if I burn this direction, it's just gonna make me go faster in the direction I'm going away from them right now, okay? But what we wanna do is burn toward the target. And this is the indicator of the target. And as you can see, it's kind of dark, but as you can see, I'm kind of lined up right at it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna burn toward it. Positive relative velocity vector kind of points toward it. We can point it right at it by burning just like this. You can also turn on the RCS thrusters and use the manipulation. You can see that it moving in the nav ball as I burn one way, burn another way. Um, and right now I'm using the I, J, K, and L keys uh, to do translation. Uh, forward and back translation is H and N. Uh, and that and that's forward and back. So see it again. H N. Okay, anyway, so we're closing at a distance or at a speed of 4.3 meters per second. As you can see, I'm already uh, under 400 meters away from him. We're going to switch, get this director right on top of him. Just speed up a little bit because I don't want to wait forever. And what we can do, instead of flipping the ship around and point the other direction to slow down, what we can just do is use our RCS thrusters to do that. And that's just by using... Uh, H and N. Well, I guess in this case, N. <laughs> I had to test it. Okay, so N will actually burn us, like, slow us down right now. And let's actually point that. No, not at the node, at the target. So we can use MechJeb, point at the target. Alright, we're getting real close. Let's make sure that this is actually going to slow us down quick enough. Oh god! If I had, God, with the Kerbals and the talking. If I had lights, you'd probably already see him. He's really close. In fact, let me turn that off. You can kind of see his outline out here. I just happen to be doing this on the dark side of the planet, which is not helping things. See him there? He's like right in front of me. Okay, turn him back. I don't. Oh shit. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay, and you can see that because MechJeb is on, it's constantly pointing me at him. I'm going to turn that off. And, okay, so here's a good example of, of docking maneuvers, okay? I'm pointed one way. The Kerbal's over here. He's got a different vector velocity. So what I want to do is point at the target, okay? Burn toward the target. That'll flip that around. Now I'm going to use translation. Shit, what happened? Oh, I think I'm out of fucking RCS. Shit, I am. Okay, so no big deal. We can do docking maneuvers later. Right now, I just switch over to Etricurm. Hit R, turn on his... Turn on his RCS and fly him over to this ship. Get him in the damn thing. Oh god. Grab the fucking. Okay. Alright, he's on board. That should complete part of the mission. Etri Kermit is now part of the space program crew. And I get some rep and some money for that. I gotta actually return him all the way to base to complete the full mission. Uh, Alright, hold on. Let's see what we got here. Audio works. Hey, that's me. Game auto is a lot louder than you. Okay, let's see here. Holy shit, Chatterer. Okay. Uh, could you hear me okay, though, when Chatterer wasn't being annoying? Ping me once for yes, twice for no. Once only. Name that movie. One ping only. Okay, so I guess that means you can hear me fine. Okay, good. Um... 
Okay, so we have the Kerbal, and we could land, uh, and that would, f and assuming we survived, that would com fully complete the mission. But let's do, for the sake of argument, let's do, since this debris is right here, let's do, let's do another intercept. Okay, he's real close. The, the, it, it's gaining away from us. But let's say that we just maneuvered to intercept a space station, and, or some, you know, satellite that's disabled. Excuse me. Now I want to go close the close the gap. So I'm going to point at the target. You can see the negative relative velocity vector is like right in front of me. So that means that I'm I'm flying away from it right now. So we want to change that. So we want to burn toward it. Okay. Now it's almost toward it. That means I'm going to pass underneath it. So we turn up like this. Turn up for what? Burn some more. It'll actually bring that up a little quicker so we're not going too fast because if we would have just stayed pointing at the target and kept burning until that that indicator was on the was on the target indicator we'd have been going like 20 or 30 meters per second by the time that the flight indicator the yellow thing was on the, per the pink thing and then that just wastes fuel and then I'd have to turn around and burn the opposite direction uh, since I'm out of RCS fuel so now I'm gonna turn around since it's pretty cl it's close enough and I'm going to burn in the relative, not the target, but the negative relative velocity. We could burn toward the target, but we would never fully zero out our speed. Only doing pointing, uh, burning in this direction, we would. Uh, these concepts, I, I know when the first time this was explained to me, this was all very confusing. But at one point, it just clicks, and it makes sense. So, and I'm probably not explaining it very, very well. Okay, so um, closing at a rate of 5.4 meters per second. Uh, I've already gained about 300 meters on this thing. Um, we're going to stay pointed in the negative relative velocity vector. Ugh. And as we get a little closer, we're going to burn. Now, there's nothing that tells you when you need to start. I mean, you can set up maneuver nodes to do this stuff, but it's a lot easier at these close distances to eyeball it as far as... Um, doing, figuring out, okay, well, how close does he need to be before I need to start burning? Well, that's a, a matter of what your thrust to weight ratio is. If you notice that your ship that you built can get up to speed pretty quick, does it have good acceleration, then you can wait a little while to, to start your, your burn. But if you your engine is really underpowered, you might want to start, especially if you're going really fast, you might want to start slowing down a lot sooner. That's all eyeballing it, okay? Uh, we're now at uh, 200 meters about and you can see the target indicator this is the actually the, the technically the opposite of the target indicator since I'm fang facing away from it if I pointed in that direction I'd be pointing directly away from the ship but you can see as we've been getting closer these two have been getting further apart because I'm not going to be pass I'm not going to be running into it I'm going to be passing right by it and as we pass it you're going to see that this pink thing it's going to turn to the other reticle and show up on this side, but we're going to stop that real quick. We're going to burn, we're going to slow down. Relative velocity. Okay, zeroed out. All right, now I'm going to turn toward the target. And I'm going to burn. Oh shit. All right, and then I'm going to turn away so that I can slow down as we get closer. Let's check our fuel. Okay, fuel's good. Electric charge is good. We're just out of amount of propellant. So Etri had been on a uh, an EVA for a while to get rescued, so he's perfectly content staying in the ship. But Sheptus, when we circularize, or when, sorry, when we uh, match speeds with our target, Sheptus is going to go on an EVA and inspect inspect our um, uh, stage that we that we dropped. <clears throat> Make sure there aren't any loose parts because we don't want any small objects flying off at high high speeds and running into other spacecraft since we have to leave it in orbit yeah that's the ticket <laughs> the 
the speed at which we're closing is very slow, so I'm going to bump it up a notch. Flip around before we run into it. Remember, if I had RCS, I could do this without ever turning away from it. I could just turn the RCS on and tell it to burn without ever flipping my ship around. Just tell it to slow down, or make it slow down while pointing at it. Okay, so we're going to pass right past it. So we're going to... This is probably close enough. Let's slow down. Let's be precise. So I'm going to turn the thrust limiter on. So all my throttle inputs are smaller. All right. That's good enough for me. It's got a slight rotation. So we're going to send Sheptus on a EVA. Maybe he can stop the rotation. Just let it bump into him. Bonk. It's pretty massive, so we're going to have to do that. Oh, yeah. Fairings, no colliders. Bonk. All right, using the RCS thrusters to stop the spin. Ooh, my frame rate is shitty. All right, now, uh, if you notice, my star field just keeps coming in and out. It's because I have a mod on called Distant Object Enhancement. It's supposed to give you realistic lighting. So the, the, the planet is so bright that it would be so hard to see the stars compared to that. Once you look away from the planet, the stars are visible. One of the cool things about this mod, you can't see it right now, but... It also adds flares for all the planets. There's one. It's probably really far away. You can't even see it on the, on the stream, I'm sure. And I can actually see the flares for Duna and Jewel. Here's Duna, because it's orange. -ish. Here's Jewel, because it's green. I'm assuming, anyway. Um, it's kind of a cool mod, though. Oh, there, you can kind of see Duna right there on the edge of the screen. Kind of a neat mod. Anyway, let's let's inspect this debris. Okay, frame rate's terrible. Kia Incorporated. All right, slow down. So many babies. All right, so. All right. Oh god, such frame rate. So that that random failures mod allows me to inspect things and repair insulation. Need one spare to maintain this. I'd have to go get that from the command module, but it's debris. I'm not going to do any of that nonsense. But engines have multiple points of failure, so like it's kind of cool to get a little closer. So there we go. So. Apparently it has battery, so it actually, the engine probably stores like 0.5 electric charge. I don't know why that happens. Uh, so I could replace the battery, which would be kind of pointless. I can clean the engine. I can inspect the engine, which tells me what state it's in. Uh, battery, engine, and tank all seem to be in a good situation. I can repair the insulation to the tank. Um, all right, so that's the idea. Oh, okay, so here we go. I'm looking right at the sun, so that's really bright. I can see the flares for Eve. Uh, something. Uh, something, something, and I think those are Jewel and Duna. All right, so let's get back into spacecraft. Whoa. Slow down there, hot shot. All right, so here's another thing I like about the Final Frontier mod. A lot of the mods, or I'm sorry, a lot of the the ribbons that this mod offers are automatically awarded upon doing different things. So Etri, when we rescued him, he was already in Kerbal Orbit and an EVA, so he's already got those ribbons. Um, Sheptus, the guy that came, we sent up to. Uh, uh, rescue uh, has a series of ribbons that he's accumulated in his short 
space career. What we're going to do is we're going to add a ribbon for space search and rescue. And that means uh, that's the way I denote that he's been in command of a search and rescue mission. But he's also, what is he wearing, blue? He's also kind of a, a, of a scientist, we'll say. Um, oh shit, blue is engineering. Oh man, these ribbons are backwards. Okay, we said he's a scientist, so he gets the scientist ribbon. There, done. So, uh, it's kind of nonsensical, but you can do that shit too. Okay, so let's um, point our ship in the direction of retrograde uh, in preparation for a return to Kerbin. Okay, so uh, do you have any other questions while we have the opportunity while we're up here with some Kerbals? No, sir. Well done. Okay, excellent. So, um, I don't know how useful that'll be. If anything, you can just, like, save the recording and watch it if you forget something or feel like you need a, a walkthrough. I don't want to read a Okay. Alright. You talk way too much. I am s uh, Are you done? Now you're just talking back. Don't get lippy. Alright. Tired of your nonsense. Is it possible that I have the ability to hit hit a button and make that happen automatically? Roger control, confirm that. Thank you, Control. Alright, well, let's go ahead and since we're here, let's do our re entry and waste a whole friggin' tank of fuel. Uh, retrograde burn. Okay, so we're gonna set this back to orbit mode. And do I have landing autopilot yet? No. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get this as close to the Space Center as we can. Let's... Okay, here's, here's where we need to land, but we're already past that point, so let's do another orbit. that mission control you want me to stir the tanks copy stirring the tanks <sighs> okay so about right here we're gonna try and do a retrograde burn We're gonna hit a lot of high G's on this on this re-entry, I think. Ooh, I need to turn my thrust a little back off. I gotta figure out if there's a key function I can remove the cloud cover from map view. Oh god. Okay, that's probably pretty close. So let's uh, let's see what happens. All right, clear for separation of the 
re-entry stage. Let's, uh, let's do this. And let's turn nominal or anti-nominal. I don't remember what this is called. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna separate the stages in a direct, in a way, I, I'm traveling this way, right? But I'm gonna separate the stages, so I go this way and the, the engine goes this way. So that way, there's no chance that on re-entry, I'm gonna run back into that. The chances are so minimal as it is, but it's just precautionary. So we're gonna separate, then I'm gonna turn back. Retrograde. And I'm gonna time warp. Notice that as soon as I got rid of those, my... I think those RCS thrusters are modeled poorly. Or maybe not poorly, but they're not optimized yet. Because I don't want to say that, because it's a really well done mod. It's part of the... Bohemio Dynamics something or other... Um small parts mod that's like tiny little retractable engines and retractable rcs thrusters great idea and concept but i think it just needs to optimize the models and the textures because i think that what might have been what was causing that slowdown could have just been the overall part count but anyway so now we are at 53 we're in the atmosphere at 52 uh thousand meters and we're just now hitting the first part of the atmosphere I can probably go ahead and turn off SAS now, and I'll probably the the wind speed will probably start keeping me in a direction of of, an, of a retrograde um, positioning. Uh, I'm using real shoots mod right now, so that means that every parachute you have to, you use, you have to configure for your expected landing weight. Otherwise, they may not work properly, and you could crash. It adds an element of randomness uh, that I like. Not randomness, but if you don't prepare properly or if, let's say you grab a bunch of extra resources that you didn't think about and then you don't plan properly your re-entry you could really potentially you know, kill yourself because that might be too much weight for the parachute. I'm going to arm that parachute real quick. It should auto-deploy at the preset altitudes, which I believe I set it somewhere around 2,500 meters. Yep, for the first stage. And if I had deadly wrench here on that parachute would be toast. Okay. Um, and then I think the final, the, the parachute opens all the way at about anywhere between 400 and 700 meters above the surface. And it'll slow me down just in time to hit the ground. Let's cross our fingers. Uh, one of the things that you might think, oh, well, now you have an extra Kerbal, and if you didn't plan that in the mission, oh, you're fucked. Well... Uh, knowing previously that this game does not actually add weight for Kerbals. This ship would weigh the same as it as it would now as it would with no Kerbals in it, which I guess is not super accurate, but that's just how it is. So we're going to be passing through this cloud layer, and where are we? We are landing just shy of the Space Center, it looks like, I think. I think the Space Center is right there, about 50, 50 kilometers away, 60 kilometers away. So I have a feeling we're going to be landing in the mountains, and this may not be very good. Because I don't think that these are set to go off with radar altimeter. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is not good. Oh, this is not good. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. Even if I do slow down, which I did, I'm on a really serious incline. Alright, well, cross your fingers, guys. I'm gonna get a medal if you survive this. Oh, shit! No, 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 no. Oh, at least the parachute stayed deployed just in case something terrible happens. Oh no, I spoke too soon. Okay. Just had enough electricity to fucking do that. Okay. Alright, um... So, I am going to do something really stupid. Because I think I need science for, from the mountains. Oh, 
Uh, yes. Um, so, yes, I'm going to get this real quick. Store that. Let go. That wasn't a mistake. And take a surface sample and get back in the pot. Over the vessel. Now, since I have mission controller mod on, it charges me for any new Kerbal, so I think it's going to charge me 4,000 for adding the Kerbal to the team. So, Etri got some ribbons. Sheptus got the two ribbons I assigned him. I recovered 18 science, about 1,500 in funds, uh, 8.0 in reputation. And contract's been completed. Uh, crashed, okay. Uh, and it doesn't look like I got charge for him. Maybe they turned that off since I got free Kerbal, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's see. That's... This is the mission control button that I was talking about. There's really not a lot you can do here. Uh, these ComSet network contracts, you don't really need those. I keep those off. Um, and this is like a custom configurable satellite mission or something. I don't mess with any of that. I just really, what I really want this this for is the missions to launch company satellites into orbit using that repair part so that I get repair missions later, uh, which I enjoy doing. Um... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's that. That's the recover of Kerbal. I'm gonna go get food. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, do not stir the thing. Uh, Twitch chat, bro. Okay. How much money do you have? I has a lot. I has a lot. I guess you can hear me say that. Why am I typing? <laughs> Um, let me, let's see, uh, nine, uh, 151,000 monies. But, I mean, that's not a really good indicator, considering I have a lot of mods on here that add additional contracts. Um, so, I mean, and then I also have debris funds, so I get, depending on how I set up my rockets, I can put parachutes on them, so that'll they land safely they I get money back for those so I mean I can actually save a lot of money doing that I just don't do it very often um, but I'm gonna go ahead and end the broadcast uh, now uh, and go get some food but uh, I can always uh, do another broadcast later if you guys are interested all right where's the off button